Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 11 to 15 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2018. If you're preparing for the Junior Maths Challenge, also take my free online course, uh, Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge. In that course, you can practice real questions from recent Junior Maths Challenge papers. Every question has a video hint as well as a full video solution, and there are no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. Uh, sign up in the link below, no payment details required or, not, or anything like that, totally free of charge, so have a look at that now. There is also an upgrade course called Go for Gold in Math Challenges, and in that course you can learn about all of the techniques you need for the Math Challenges and practice on loads of original practice problems that I've made up there as well. But you can have a go at the free course first, it's a big course and it's very substantial and it'll really help you prepare uh, for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I really hope that I'll see you over there. So it's not as hard as it looks here just to do this division and uh, so this is a reasonable approach here. If I just do 120, 1, 2, 3 into 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, I can't, you know, it doesn't go into 1 or 12 so the first time it works is when it goes into 123 so I get a 1 here and then I'm going to get 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So we can pretty quickly do this and just see that the answer is uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and so the answer is D, 10 here. And you might be able to spot that without doing this uh, calculation as well, um, especially if you've done problems you know, where you multiply something by 1,001 before. I mean, that comes up a lot in Maths Challenge questions because if I do 1,001 times a number like 347, right, that's the same as... 1,000 times 347 plus 1 times 347. Okay, so that's 347,000 plus 347. So the fact we multiplied by 1,000 here, you know, means the 347 just slots nicely on top of the zeros and gives us these sorts of repeating patterns. So where you get a product of a, uh, that's got repeating patterns in like that may well have a factor that's either you know, 1,001 or perhaps 101 or 10,001 or something, depending how long the repeating pattern is here. But as I say, fast to do the division here, so why not, uh, or super fast, if you can just spot uh, something like saying, you could also just say, like, what size is this roughly? So when I do when I do this divided by 123, you could say, oh, well, I know I'm just going to get like a 1 here and then some other digits, and you don't even have to work out the rest of the calculation. So you could just say you know it's going to be as long as this number or something if you're really confident. Um, so neither of those methods takes too long here. So uh, whatever you do, just make sure we get the answer D. Okay, there's a lot of information to take in in this question. Um, it tells us that PR bisects uh, SPQ, that's this angle here, so that means that these two are the same. And it also tells us that a ratio of SPR, this one, to PRS, this one, is two to three. And that's the key piece of information we're going to use first here. So the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So these two, uh, let me just call them X and Y for now, uh, X plus Y must have to add up to 180 minus 110, which is 70 degrees. So we've got to split that 70 degrees in the ratio of two to three. So there are five parts in total in this ratio, two plus three is five, and 70 degrees in total. So each part must be 70 divided by five, which is the same as 140 over 10, or 14. So two parts is two times 14 is 28, and three parts is three times 14, which is 42. So that means that these two angles here are actually 28, and 42. Now because we said earlier that this one SPQ um, bisects the angle, sorry the PR bisects the angle SPQ, that means that these two are equal so this one is also 28 and we're also told that this is an isosceles triangle, we've got these two lengths being the same, uh, P PQR is isosceles so that means this angle is also 28 and that means that the angle we're looking for PQR down here, PQR is going to be 180 minus 28 minus 28 or just 180 minus 56 uh, if you like which is 124 and so the answer is A 124 degrees. Each individual face of the cube here is just a 3 by 3 square so has an area of 9 centimeters squared. So what this question is really about is working out the surface area of this whole shape and what we really just need to do is count how many faces are actually visible on the outside uh, of the shape here and if any are 
uh, covered up. And what you can see here is that it says it's only made from four cubes, so all of the four we can see here. Now, uh, that actually means that every face of all of the cubes are visible. It looks a little bit like from the picture when you first look at it, that those sort of three at the back are somehow uh, joined together uh, like with faces attached, but they're not because there isn't a cube at the back there. We can see all the cubes that are there. So every face is open and all of the connections between these cubes are just sort of along uh, the edges here, but there are no faces stuck together. So every cube has six faces. Uh, there are four uh, cubes. So we've got six times four is 24 faces. All of those faces have nine centimeters squared. So I just need to do 24 times nine. Um, two ways of doing this, a lot of people would do 24 times 10 to get 240 and subtract and then subtract 24 to get 24 times 9 so that would give me 216 um, or you could do something like 20 times 9 is 180 uh, 4 times 9 is 36 and add them together to get 216 as well or just do an ordinary multiplication if you prefer whatever method you have but we are looking for fast multiplication methods save us a bit of time if we can here. Anyway, either way, the answer is D216. If Billy has three times as many llamas as lambs, his llama to lamb ratio must be three to one. In particular, that means that the total number of animals that he has must be a multiple of four, because for every three, uh, three times as many llamas as lambs, so for every uh, lamb, there's three llamas. Millie has twice as many lambs as llamas, so hers are in the ratio of two to one. So for her, it must be a, a multiple of three, okay? Um, because she's got twice as many lambs as llamas. So for every llama, she's got two lambs. So they sort of come in little groups of three. Now, uh, so what we're looking for is a multiple of four plus a multiple of three that makes 17. Uh, and actually, there's only one way of doing that, 16 plus uh, so if I take 16 as the multiple of 4, I've only got 1 left over to make 17, 12 plus 5, uh, 9 plus, um, sorry, that would be 8 plus uh, 9, uh, or um, 4 plus 13. Uh, so you see these are the multiples of 4 and what you need to add to them to make 17. Uh, and the only way you can do that with a multiple of 3 is this one 9, so it must be 8 and 9. So it must be actually that Billy's uh, got 6 to 2 and uh, Millie has uh, 9, so that's going to be um, at 6 to 3. Now I've just got to be really careful which way around they are. So Billy has three times as many llamas as lambs, so he's got more llamas, so the llamas are the 6, whereas Millie's got twice as many lambs as llamas, so for her the llamas are the smaller group, uh, so the total number of llamas here is 6 plus 3 and the answer is 9, uh, which is E. So here we're trying to place these L-shaped squares on this 4 by 4 square. The first thing we notice here is that the 4 by 4 square has uh, 16 tiles and the L-shape has 3. So I'm never going to be able to get 6 on here, right, because 3 times 6 is 18, I would need two more squares if I uh, wasn't going to have any overlapping. So now I'm just going to play around with them and see if I can make it work. If I can find a way of doing five, we'll be done. Otherwise, I'll, I'll have to make a more complicated argument. Um, so I try putting them in. So let's say I put an L over like that. Uh, maybe I put one like this. I could put one here. Um, I could try putting one here. Ah, now this method hasn't quite worked. So I can maybe try and tweak it. And I'm just going to keep playing around with different ways until I find the way of doing it right. So actually, I think if I want to be efficient, I want to sort of try and not block off squares. So I might try putting an L around here and then one here. Now I've used up the whole of the bottom half, you see. Now I can put one here. That's not without leaving any gaps. And then I can put one another one in here somehow, right? So I'm only leaving one uh, spare space here. And that's the best I can do. I found a way of covering it with five shapes. So uh, if I played around with that sort of problem a bit longer and I couldn't find a way of doing it, I might start trying to show that it wasn't possible. But uh, the first thing we're going to try and do here is to put as many as we can in. Anyway, the answer there, as you can see, is D5. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses 
for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some up upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well. But there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.